Hello there makers, it's Jo from Minerva. Today we're going to do a fitting tutorial on shoulders. If you change your shoulder seam, it can change lots of other things on the upper body of your garment. So it can change your armhole psych, it can change your back neck, join how far your neck comes up, if your neck does that. If you change your shoulder, if I move my shoulder back, it's changing that back seam. So there's lots of things to talk about. If we change the shoulder seam, we change lots of things. It's quite a simple way to get a really better fit on something. So if you're at the start of fitting clothes for yourself, then finding out about a shoulder seam and how you can alter that is a really good place to start. I've been using a new book called Figure Your Fit, which is available on our website, which gives some really useful information on um, things that I've been talking about in the fit video. So you can go back and reference it here. So today we're looking at shoulders and armholes. So it gives you the pattern layouts if you'd like to have a go at changing those yourself. This is on our website. I'm heading over to the cutting table so that I can show you on some flat pattern pieces some of the alterations you might make for your body shape. Here's an upper body piece in paper. It's just simple. So here is the centre fold. You'll see me writing backwards. Okay, here's the centre fold, here's the arm side, here's the neckline. And if you want to make a shoulder alteration, you need to be looking for a couple of things. So if this part of your arm side is really baggy and gaping, then you need to do a sloping shoulder adjustment. So if this is the shoulder seam line here, you need to take your seam like this. So you're going to take off some of this and that little bit that you've got there will hitch up this arm psyche. You won't have changed the side seam, you won't have changed the neckline, you will have just taken out the gaping here and that's a sloping shoulder adjustment. The best way to do it is to pin fit the tissue. So if you put the tissue on and the centre meets your centre line and it sits up on your shoulder and you pin the front to the back down here and you're getting a gape here, then you might need to do a shoulder adjustment. So you can pin it, try it on, pin it, try it on and that should take out this gape in the armhole. On the sloping shoulder, we just did which looks like this we've got to do what I call payback so we need to pay back that amount so we've lowered the shoulder by one centimeter so we need to lower the armhole by one centimeter otherwise we've made the armhole too small Join that back in. So we've lowered this arm by one centimetre and we've lowered the armhole by one centimetre. If you find when you try it on that after you've done your sloping shoulder the armhole's fine, that's great, you can leave it as it is. But if you've lowered it, you then might find that this comes too far into your armpit. The opposite to a sloping shoulder is a square shoulder and you, you'll know you've got this if you're getting some drag lines here because your shoulder is trying to, that shoulder is trying to grab some of this fabric and so it starts to pull. So this time you're going to angle the other way. So you're going to have a smaller seam allowance on the arm or edge and a wider seam allowance on the neck hole so you've given yourself that much more fabric to go over a square shoulder so your shoulder will come here so you've got more here than if you had a sloping shoulder so this is the seam line to take 
that squares it off. If you need a little bit more, you might have to put a little piece of paper behind there so that you can give yourself a different angle. So that's for a square shoulder and you'll know you need it if you're getting drag lines here. A sloping shoulder, you'll get gaping here. As with all alterations, um, we need to pay back. So on our square shoulder, we have taken out and raised the outer edge of the shoulder by 1.3 millimetres. So I need to add that back on to the sleeve. Because if I don't, then I've actually made the armhole 1.3 lower. So I might be showing my underwear there or um, so I can put that back and rejoin the arm shape. Again, you'll need to check your sleeve if it's going in or change your facing if it's sleeveless with a facing. So that's your square shoulder and then you pay him back. It's also worth noting that sometimes your shoulders won't be the same. So you might have a right shoulder that's slightly lower than your left shoulder if you're right-handed and you carry your handbag on your right arm, or you might have your right arm hitched up to hold a handbag. So make sure that the pattern, um, when you fit it, you fit both shoulders to see if they're the same. You will recognize a broad shoulder if you're getting lots of drag lines going this way. And you will, if you have a sleeve, you'll see some in the sleeve as well. So if your shoulder's a bit broader, um, there's not enough material to fill your shoulder shape, so it's pulling around here. So you can see this is the armhole edge. And here we're getting some pulling. So this time we need to add a little bit to the shoulder and you can do this with um, a French curve or a curved ruler. This one's from So Easy, it comes on the website. So think, look where your wrinkles are pointing to and you can add some to the shoulder seam and you can curve your arm sight back out. If you have made a change to an armhole and there's a sleeve to go in, you may need to double check for your notches, match up your notches of your sleeve. But that's added one centimeter on the front and it will also add one centimeter on the back armhole. That's an adjustment for a broad shoulder. Okay, for narrow shoulders, you'll get different drag lines. You'll get some sort of sagging here, sort of from your shoulders, because your shoulders are narrower than there, so there's too much fabric hanging off your shoulder. So this is just the opposite movement. So you're going to, that was our piece we put on for a broad shoulder. So this time we would just take that off and you would do the same for your back piece and that will change your shoulder seam. Again, that's opened out the sleeve head a little bit so you will need to check if you're inserting a sleeve. So that's an adjustment for a narrow shoulder. And you know you've got it if you have some spare fabric here. Today, I'm taking a look at fitting the Verda 6516 jumpsuit. I have made it before and the bottom half was great and the waist shaping was great and the bust was great but I had some problems around the armhole so I'm going to revisit that pattern and see if I can get a better fit. I'm at a slightly different camera angle now because I want you to see the top of the shoulder and the armhole and this is a tissue fit that I'm making for Verda 6516. So the first thing I did was the back fit. So I made sure, um, I did it on myself, not on a mannequin. I made sure the centre back line was running straight down my back. It wasn't, this was kicking out this way. 
so I did a sway back adjustment and straightened up the centre back line. Did it reach my waist? No, so I put the inch in that I needed for it to reach my waist and that was one of the problems when I made the first jumpsuit was um, it was riding up and it wasn't long enough in the body. And then I moved to the shoulder seam and I've done a sloping shoulder adjustment like I just showed you on the table. So I've got a narrower seam allowance at the neck going out to a wider seam allowance at the arm. When I did that, the centre point of my sleeve wasn't on the centre of my arm going down here. So when I stand with my arm like that, the centre line of the sleeve was now different. So I had to move the back forward. So I've done a forward shoulder adjustment. So I've moved that there and I had to put another little bit of paper in there. I've taken a pinch out of there because I had a gaping armhole and not even the sloping shoulder would fix it. So I must be quite hollow here. And I had a gape on the back armhole. So I took the same out of there. I matched up the centre line. So the centre line ran down the centre of my body in the dark scene. And then I realised that's where I need some more space. So when I've put more space in there, that's given me that slightly bigger armhole that I wanted. I don't want bigger armhole up here. I don't want a big armhole here by scooping it out. I don't want to scoop it deeper. I don't want to scoop it more into my arm. I just needed the width there and that's helped with the width on my hip. So you can see that changing one thing on a shoulder changes the back arm psych the front arm psych and where your centre line tips straight and whether your back will sit flush on your back without a gape at the top. So do have a go at changing your shoulder seam. It seems um, when you start your sewing following in the instructions, sew the shoulder seams is often the first thing to do and you sew it quickly and then you move on to the rest but really you need at that point to try it on and see where you're landing because if you're putting a sleeve head in it needs to be on that bone of your sleeve. You don't want it hanging too far over, you don't want it restricting your sleeve head. So have a go at trying on your uh, tissue and then you can pin fit the fabric. So before you sew the shoulder seams, pin them across, try them on and see how you're getting on with your neckline, your back and your arm sights. If you've made something that's a super fit, we'd love to hear about it. So if you post a, uh, a picture of your garment and which pattern you, you used, if you could say if you made any alterations, that's really useful for people because people who are with a similar body shape can take a look at how you've altered your garments and how they can improve their own. I hope that helps you to get a better fit on your clothes. Obviously, sometimes it opens uh, a can of worms and it asks more questions than it answers. But once you start changing this shoulder angle, you should be able to get some better fit on your clothes. It's a good one to start with if you're starting out your journey in fitting garments. Thank you very much for watching. Do call again for more fitting tutorials soon.